Hi, I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. I'm here with Amy Minkoff, a happy success catalyst. Amy, I love those three words. What do they mean together? Well, first, thank you, Elizabeth, for having me today. And I can't wait to tell you what it is to be a happy success catalyst. What those words mean together are that I coach clients not only on the success that they're going for, the money they want to earn, the title, but also on the fulfillment they want to get out of life. Some people think that they have to have success at the expense of their happiness or happiness at the expense of having the earnings to live a comfortable life. And I show people how to do both. And really, you can have those two things. You can't have it all because there are certain things I will teach you to leave behind so you too can have happy success. Wow, that sounds great. So you have your own coaching business, Amy Minkoff Coaching. Yes. And what is your website? AmyMinkoff.com? AmyMinkoffCoaching.com. AmyMinkoffCoaching.com. And You've learned a lot through your life. I see you have a degree from the University of Virginia and an MBA from Columbia. So what did those teach you in terms of business? A lot, I'm sure. Yeah, well, quite a bit. I mean, the, the academic training gave me a great toolbox for business, which led me to a 25-year career in corporate marketing. I was in the pharma industry. And then after that, uh, I added some new credentials, namely uh, coach training from the Institute for Professional Excellence in Coaching. Uh, I've also been trained by the Brave Thinking Institute. The Brave Thinking Institute? What is yeah. that? Yeah, well, um, that's another coaching institute led by Mary Morrissey, who is a transformation guru. She has shared the stage with Bob Proctor at um, uh, Carnegie Hall in Manhattan. And one of the things I'll share quickly that I'm really proud of is that I was once invited to share the stage with Mary Morrissey of this institute to inspire other coaches to up-level the quality of their work and their fulfillment in the industry that we're in together. And it was my role to get up on stage, share my own story, my own business success, as well as how I've overcome challenges in my life. And that was really a great privilege and accomplishment to, to be on stage with Mary. That's excellent. So what do you do that sets you apart from other coaches? I know coaches all do things a little differently. What's your special niche? Yeah, well, um, my niche in terms of who I coach is with visionary leaders, professionals, and business owners. But more importantly, there are a few things about my style and my approach that I would want you to know. First, right now in the craze of Zoom and video, I rely solely on audio when I'm working directly with my clients. Such because a relief. One of the most, it, right? It's one okay. of the most important things a client does is listen, not a client, the coach, on behalf of their client. We are listening and hearing them. And if you think about when a person loses a sense, like someone who loses their vision, their hearing becomes heightened. So by me not focusing on a screen and worrying about whether I'm looking up or down, uh, I'm focusing on hearing what my client has to say. So that's the first important difference. The second thing I do that's unique is um, that I coach the whole person. I believe I alluded to this, the idea of coaching a person on um, what motivates them, what makes them tick, even on their lives at home, because our professional success is influenced by what else is going on in our lives. And how we're doing in our professional life also influences what's going on at home. And then the final thing I want to share with you is the philosophy I have that there's this thing I call a transformation trifecta, which I'll explain. Imagine a triangle representing the three parts in each corner of this trifecta. The first is my client's vision for the results they would truly love to have in their business and also their life. That's in the top corner. 
Then in the bottom two corners are first their mindset mentor. That's my role where I give accountability, tools, insight, uh, a sense of championing. And then in the other corner, the third thing is the structure that they're in with me. The regular, repeated, coming to meet with me with one every week, having regular, repetitive uh, exercises and activities to do. And you put these three things together with the client in the center and watch out how they grow and achieve what they've never thought they could achieve before. That's awesome. Do you have a success story you can share with me? Absolutely. I have several, but I'll pick my most recent favorite. This is Claudia, who came to me about a month or so before the pandemic began. She was overwhelmed with uncertainty. She was in a transition stage regarding her career. She was looking for a new job. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she really was feeling uh, nervous and unconfident about how she would narrow down among the options she was looking at, how she would convey her value uh, compared to the competition and how she would build her confidence to show up really articulate in her interviews. So we get started working together. And then a few weeks in, the pandemic hits. So what was already a big enough challenge for her suddenly seemed exponentially bigger. And you know, in the session the week after everything was shut down, she's like, how will I ever do this? This is impossible. Well, I said, you're in the perfect place. I will help you. And with my guidance, her increased focus and her increased confidence, by the time we were done with this three-month program, she landed a coveted position working from home at a highly regarded tech firm. So it took us just a few short months and an even more challenging circumstance for her to achieve exactly what she set out to do. Wow, that's awesome. So it sounds like you have the structure piece, you have the accountability piece, and it's all very client focused and you have your magic sauce that you use and putting all those together. I, that is an extremely impressive story in this day and age and the circumstances, especially the beginning of COVID like that because people didn't know what was gonna happen and to get a job then Exactly, exactly. And what I really showed Claudia, and I will help any client I work with, is that they are really have an inner power that's bigger than the circumstances that they're facing. And while we don't necessarily have control over the circumstances themselves, we have 100% dominion over how we engage with our environment and how we react to what's going on around us. And that's what I helped her do to get that result. That's awesome. It's hard to focus on that. We all kind of know it, but it's hard to focus on that. But you helped to really maintain that focus. Absolutely. And I call that what you just mentioned, know about it syndrome. Many of us know intellectually some things we should be doing, but we have trouble getting ourselves to do it. And um, until our results actually reflect what we say we know, we haven't internalized it. We don't really know it at a cellular level and we have no about it syndrome until we really put it into practice and create those results that we've been going for. That's really powerful. So you, as I said, when we started, every business coach does things differently. Yours sounds very different than other coaches I've talked to, but very powerful. And I'm just wondering what would a person look for in a business coach? What are some key qualities? Yes, yes. Well, first of all, um, you alluded to the first one at the beginning when you saw my diplomas. One, a coach, I believe, should be properly uh, credentialed and certified in a road-tested, time-tested system. Second, a uh, coach should be able to share success stories about clients and the results they've been able to help other people create. And finally, and really importantly, it's great to 
discover that you have a true energetic fit with the coach and that you have a true feeling that they genuinely care for you and your dreams. Excellent. So who are your typical clients? Yeah, so I mentioned um, in terms of specific uh, who are my clients, they tend to be visionary leaders or who at least are aspiring to be visionaries and they're business owners and professionals. There are also some important attitudinal characteristics to the people I work with. Uh, first of all, they're people who are willing to in, invest their resources, their money and their time in their personal growth, not for growth's sake, but because they have usually a pretty significant mission that they've undertaken in their lives. And they are committed not only to the result, but to doing the work uh, to get there. That's really important. And I know that all the successful, important people, maybe not 100%, maybe 99% use business coaches or have used them. I know. Yeah, yeah. And and my well, a couple of things on that one, my grandma who lived to 105 taught me a few wise things. And uh, she taught me and my mother that uh, really, it's only the successful people who are willing to ask for help. Uh, she also taught me that it's really important to spend a minimum of five minutes every day doing something you truly, truly love. And then back to the main point, which is um, about successful business people working with coaches. If, if anyone thinks about the most successful people that they look, look up to, whether they're in the um, celebrity realm or someone in their personal life, it's highly likely that they have had either a coach or some sort of mentor. They probably did not do it alone. I would put my money on that because there's this thing I call Lone Ranger Syndrome. It doesn't work. Uh, we're made to be in communities and to receive help for the purpose of fulfilling what we were put here to do. Absolutely. And um, my husband owns a successful law firm. It's 15, he's had it for 15 years next mm -hmm. month. And he's had coaches. Congratulations. Yeah. I help him with it. Um, I do this too. But he's had coaches all along. And he's he will be the first one to say, I had to work on myself to be successful. And he still uses coaches. Uh, you know, all these people do. I remember going to a corporate dinner with him years ago and someone pointing out this woman and saying, oh yeah, that's the CEO's coach of this huge corporation. I'm like, why would a CEO of a huge corporation need a coach? Well, <laughs> because he wants to be better, right? Yeah. And you know, um, I coach successful people, right? Who are looking for that next level. And one, one viewpoint I hold is that we're either, um, and I learned this from one of my first coaching mentors, we're either learning and growing or, or dying, meaning we're going backwards on a downward spiral or we're moving forwards and up on an upward spiral of evolution and growth, which is really what the universe is doing. So when we are being coached, we're having an opportunity to continue on our upward spiral, spiral of growing and learning. That is so true. You are never standing still. It's like that old thing in the military where they say, okay, volunteer, take a step forward and everybody else takes a step back except the one guy, <laughs> right? Because they know, but you're never standing still. I agree with you hundred percent. You're, you yeah. know- And sometimes we do stand still because our fears get a hold of us and that's that's because we're human and that's my role is to see what's going on with my clients from another angle if the client is in the picture frame of their life they can look down and see their shoulders and maybe the side of their nose but they don't have the uh, the other vantage point that the client has and that's what my role is to to help a client get a look at what's going on for them from another vantage point. Excellent. So how many clients have you helped so far? About Oh, uh, dozens privately and, and hundreds and maybe even more than that in terms of my speaking. 
because uh, that's the main way people have been getting to know me over the years is I will go out and speak at organizations, corporations, not-for-profits uh, to, to teach the message of transformation and growth. And then people get interested in, in learning about doing one-on-one -on -one work. And I only work with a few people at a time because I focus primarily on year-long engagements with people who are undertaking serious initiatives. And I wanna make sure that I'm highly engaged with uh, their lives, what they're working on, so that I'm really um, closely involved and I have time for them. And I do keep uh, one or two small group sessions going on at a time. Uh, but that's why the numbers are somewhat small because of how hands-on I am. And that's better. You want a coach that remembers your name, right? Yeah, but there are some highly successful coaches who make a difference working with extremely large audiences at a time. But the fact is it's less personal. If you're on a call with a thousand people, and you know, five or six people get a turn to speak. You can absolutely learn from what the others are sharing. It's simply a different kind of experience. So if you're looking for a real hands-on kid glove experience, you would wanna work with someone like me rather than someone who is using a different style to do some good work. It's whatever the client is interested in. Excellent. Is there anything else we need to know about Amy Minkoff coaching? Well, um, if this is your time and your year, come and have a conversation with me. I'd love, I'd love to help uh, whoever's coming this way make this year the best year in their lives yet. Excellent. Well, thank you, Amy. My pleasure. Great to, great to spend time with you, Elizabeth.